Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be exploring the Intro Scroll Images, one of the widgets from the key add ons for Elementor Premium Collection. With this widget, you can create dynamic visual presentations that would serve as your site's first impression. Here we have an example of the widget's use, shown in the form of an image. What we're seeing is actually a screen grab of a demo homepage where the intro scrolling images was used. You can see that page, and we'll do that in a second, by following the link below the image. Further still, we can see some additional information on the widget, highlighting a few of its features. Ok, that's it for the page dedicated to this widget. Let's go check out that link now and take a closer look at a possible design solution for this widget. Alright, here we are. The page has a full coverage background created by adding an image in the appropriate option. And we have the intro scrolling images on top of that, with all these black and white visuals. If I start scrolling, you can see those visuals start to slide up while new ones are being brought up. Once all the visuals have been displayed, the scroll will take you past this to the next section and element on the page. So everything we see below, all of this, is made using different key add-ons widgets, namely the section title and portfolio list widgets. But they are not the subject matter of this video, we are here today to see how the intro scrolling images widget, this, can be set up. To help me do that, I'll be recreating this design in the coming minutes. But before we dive in, to make a faithful copy, I need to set up the background for the page that I will be working in. Let's see how that's done now. I have the page options open in this tab here. And here in the back end, under the page settings divider, you'll find the page background image option. As you can see, I already uploaded the image I want. It's a pattern image rather than a block color, although you can use that if you prefer it. But with this, I'll have the raspberry colored canvas like background to match the demo page design. Furthermore, I set the page background image attachment, which defines how the image will behave on scroll, to fixed. That way, the background pattern image won't move as I scroll through the widget or the page in general. Other than that, I set the page content padding to zero. This allows my intro scrolling images widget to stretch to the very edges of the page. And to help me with full width content display, I use the page template that would allow such a thing, specifically the Elementor full width template. With that, my page prep work is done, and we can switch over to the tab where I have the page open for editing. This is it. We can see the background is here, and now I just need to add the right widget to the blank section on the page. Let me find it. Just a sec. Ah, there. Drag it over to the page. Alright. By default, the widget is displayed boxed. The page settings we made won't force your content to shift, they merely allow it to do so. So, now I'm going to use the navigator to open the section editing options by clicking here. Then, in the layout tab, we have the content width option. I'll switch mine from box to full width. Besides that, I also need the advanced tab. That's where I'll use the margin option to set zero, and do the same for the padding. By doing this, I will have eliminated any buffer of space between my section and the page edges. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the column. Select it in the navigator. With the column editing options open, I'll select the advanced tab and set zero for the margin and padding option values. Ok, that's all I wanted here. Now we can start setting up the widget. Select it in the navigator to open its options. So the widget has some placeholder content by default. And what we want to do first is customize it. And we'll start with the overlay title. It just says title at the moment, you can see that text here on the page. Give me a moment to replace it. There. Next, there's the overlay image back option. It may be a bit hard to tell at the moment, but we have two images underneath the hello. The overlay image back is the larger one at the back, and the smaller one at the front is overlay image front. I'll replace the one at the back first. I've already uploaded the image I want to my media library, so now I just need to select it and insert it by clicking here. Once we've done that, we'll be able to see it load on the page. And now the difference between the overlay images at the back and front is much clearer. Speaking of the other overlay image, I'm going to replace that one too. The steps are identical. Click to open the media library, choose the image you want, and select it. 
give it a sec to load, and there. After those for the images, we have a handful of options for replacing the text, located at the cardinal points on the page. Currently, it just has some dummy text, but I plan to remove that later. For now, I'll close the navigator so it doesn't obstruct the view of the text on the right. The first option is for replacing this text saying welcome, and the second one is for the text on the right. This bottom option here is for the text on the left. Finally, we have just scroll for the bottom text. My design doesn't include keeping this text, but if you decide you want to use it, you have a couple of options to style it. We'll go over them now. When we open the Style tab, we'll see this section called Additional Text Styles. The options here are for adjusting the look of the text surrounding the intro scrolling images. The first thing we have is the Additional Text Color option. It has this easy to use color picker so you can set whatever color you like, for example, white. Besides the color, we have the additional text typography settings. There's a variety of things you can do here. They include changing the font family for the text. There are hundreds of fonts to choose from. Then you can change the font size. Also 30 so the text is easier to see. Then there's font weight, where you can pick any of these settings to make your text lighter or bolder. I'll switch to semi-bold. Next, we have the option to transform the text to, for example, uppercase. Following that, the style option can be used to turn the text italic or oblique, if that's something you're interested in. I'll set italic just so we can see it. After that, the decoration option can be used for adding a line over, under or through the text. I'll pick line through. Finally, there are three options for adjusting typography spacing, the line height, letter spacing and word spacing options. They do exactly what their names suggest. Okay. That's the bundle of options you get under typography. I'll close this now. And we can check out the last option in this section, the additional text offset from edges. This allows us to move the text away from the page or more precisely section edges. So if I start to drag the slider and increase the value, we can see how the text starts moving towards the center of the page. Simply put, this option lets you set the amount of pixels that will be added between the text and the page edge. Alright, those were the options for styling the text at the edges of this widget. However, I don't plan to use text in the design I'm making, so I'm going to leave all this, go back to the content tab, and then simply erase the text from the appropriate fields. Just a moment while I do that. And there. Done. The next thing we have in the options here are the items. By default, there's only one. It's this image on the page. The difference between this, let me open it, and the overlay images we replaced at the start is that the items, as you can see, come with several options for each image, and that those images are the ones that move on scroll, whereas the overlay images stay in the center of the widget at all times. I'll replace this dummy image. This is the one I want to use. It's in PNG format, so it's going to look more like a shape because of its transparent background. Select. And once the widget loads, we can see the new image in place of the old one. And in terms of the options we have for it, there's the item link. This is where you can add a URL to any page you like, and this image will act as an anchor. I don't need this for my design, but it's a very useful thing to have for product or portfolio presentations. Alright, after that we have the image alignment. It can be left, center or right. The default setting here is actually the same as the left. You can see there's no change if I switch to it. Now, a quick note about the alignment. New image items in this widget will be added in a sort of downward zigzag pattern. So, the first one is on the left, the next one will be on the right and one after that on the left again. Imagine there's a vertical line dividing the widget into two halves, and the alignment we set will be within those halves. Let me show you what I mean. If I switch to the center setting, the image will be perfectly in the middle of the widget. Rather, it will be in the middle of its imaginary half. That's even clearer if I switch to the right setting. Alright, I'll set my image back to where it was. After that, we have the item padding option. You can use it to add some space around the image, either all sides equally or by clicking here to disconnect them and then adding individual values for each side. This allows you to fine-tune the position of your image. 
For example, I can set 50 pixels for the left side and push the image inwards a bit. But that's just to show you, I'll clear this as I don't plan to use it for my design. I'm going to add a second item now. And when the widget loads, you can see that new item here on the right. As I said, they'll be added left, right, left, right, and so on. The next steps are the same. Choose a replacement image. This is the one I want to use. Select. I'll omit the item link again for this one. But I want to show you the alignment now. If I set it to the left, the image won't cross the invisible boundary line down the middle. It's just going to move as far left as it can within its half of the widget. Let's see what the other settings would look like. If I set center, we get this position. And if I set right, we get this position. And the right, in this case, is the same as the default setting. If I switch back to that one, there's no change. I'll be keeping this setting. Finally, we have the item padding. And I'll disconnect the field so I can enter 40 pixels only for the right side. Alright, that's my second item completed. I'll make a few more items now and customize them, but I'll do that off camera so we don't waste time on the same material. And here we are. I'm done with a total of 6 items. And if I start scrolling through the widget, this is what it looks like with its new content. With that taken care of, the content customization is mostly complete. But before we can move on to styling the widget, there are two more option sections to touch on. One is the developer tools. It contains an option you get with all of our widgets. If you switch it to yes, it will display the widget in the form of a WordPress shortcode, the light grey text you see on the page. Then you can easily copy that text for yours elsewhere on your site. Alright, I'll switch this back. And under that we have the help section. It contains links to various helpful resources, including a link to our help center, in case you need them. And that's all for the content tab. Let's take a look at the style tab now. In the first section of these options we'll be styling some general things about the intro scrolling images. So we have the items holder width. It lets us set how wide the space with our items, not the whole widget, can be. This will be much clearer when you see it. I'll switch the percentages as the unit of measure, and then when I start dragging the slider, we can see how the item images change to fit with their new space allowance. The holder enlarges and the images adapt to fit it. And for the value here, I'll put 87%. Okay, there. After that, we have the items holder top bottom space. It's for setting how much space you'll have between the top and bottom limits of the section with the widget and the holder with the item images. For this, I'll set 150 pixels. There we go. Next, there's the space between items horizontal. We can use it to set the minimum gap between the item images. Since they are already relatively far apart, my moving the slider won't have much of an effect. But if I type in a larger value, such as 70%, then the images will draw apart to make room for the new space between them. And they've shrunk since they're obliged to fit within the holder width while making room for the space between themselves. I'll erase the value I added, I only wanted to show you the options effect. After that we have something similar, the space between items, but this time vertical. When I start increasing the value, you can see how the images draw apart to have more space between the bottom of one image and the top of the next one. I'll set zero here to eliminate any space there may have been by default. Then there are two options for the width of the overlay images. The first one, overlay image back width, is for the image all the way at the back. In my case, the one I added first with landscape orientation. And with this option here, we can change its width. So if I move the slider just a bit, it makes the image narrower, so it can't be seen from the overlay image that's above it. But if I keep increasing, more and more of the image becomes visible. Since I find it easier to type in a value, I'll add 670 pixels here. OK. Then we have the overlay image front width. That's for the stop image with portrait orientation. For that one, I'll set 420 as the width. This brings us to the next section of the options, the overlay title style. These options will help us style this bit of text here. Let's see what they are. Firstly, we have the overlay title tag. The default setting is H1, but you can replace it with any of the other HTML tags in the dropdown. 
However, for my design, I'll be sticking with H1. Next, we have the overlay title color. It comes with this familiar color picker and you can use the slider or add a hex code to get the precise shade you want. I'll set plain black for this. Alright. And then we have the overlay title typography. We've already seen what's included in the typography settings, so I won't go over the options in detail. I'll just make the changes I need for my design. And those changes involve increasing the font size to 300 pixels, then changing the weight to 700 bold. Okay. And finally, I'll transform the text to uppercase. There we go. That's it. My design is complete. I can now update the page to save my work. Okay. And I'll refresh the page so we can see the animation that makes the images load gradually. And there. The content seems to populate the page step by step, serving as an added point of interest without overwhelming anyone viewing it. Then, if we start to scroll down, we can see how the item images emerge one by one and then disappear to make room for new ones. Equally, if we scroll up, those images will slide back down to become visible. So, if anyone wants to take a closer look at any of them, they won't have vanished from view. And with that, we're pretty much done. Before we part, just a brief reminder that the page we started from, this one, can serve as a reference point for the intro scrolling images widget. Here you'll find the links to the entire key add-ons collection, be able to see the image preview of a demo homepage with the design I copied for this tutorial, and there's also a link under the image if you want to inspect the page itself. And last but not least, some spotlight information about the widget's features. Hopefully, this page, as well as this video tutorial, will be a valuable resource for you. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.